going to start with a legally mandated disclaimer. My presentation reflects my personal opinions is not approved or authorized by Wild Cornell Medical College. All right, now an observation. Humans are smug. <laughs> the definition of smugness that I'd like to use is from Merriam-Webster, and it is an often unjustified feeling of being pleased with oneself or one's situation or achievements. And I'd like to stress unjustified. So we all know someone who is smug. But in reality, that's all anecdotal. So what I'd like to show is that statistically, we're all smug. So I'm gonna start with the Dunning-Kruger effect. So in 1999, Kruger and Dunning did a study where they asked the subjects to take cognitive tests and then rate their perceived ability compared to others who took the task. Now what they found is that nearly everyone overestimated their ability. And the worse you were at the task, the more you overestimated it. And they also noticed a second effect, and that is that even at the bottom quartile, people believed that they were above average. And this is the well-known better than average effect. Given almost any positive attribute, people believe they are better than the average. So clearly people are smug, but we really come now to the question of the night. Is there an evolutionary drive towards smugness? So I'd like to propose that there is. The smug hypothesis, hypothesis. Humans have evolved to be smug because smug parents have more successful offspring. <laughs> now, I think the proposition appears almost entirely reasonable and immediately obvious, but I'd like to get into the data that really supports this hypothesis. So first, we start with a study from 1981 by Smith and Greenberg, who found that being self-aware was positively correlated with being depressed. Now, it wasn't just your personal awareness, but also your awareness in relation to others. And I'd like to point out at the bottom of this table, the statistics. As you can see, all the p-values are less than 0.05. This is statistically significant and thus true. <laughs> but it's possible that being depressed does not have that big of an effect on reproductive success. But I think there's really a second component. Now, it's been well known that when parents are depressed, their children have higher risk for many developmental and mental health problems. And this is part of the reason why it's very important to treat postpartum depression. But I think this also gives smug parents a huge advantage in raising their children. This leads me to propose the cycle of smugness. So at some point in human history, the humans acquired the smug gene. Those smug adults reproduced, and their offspring had a decreased risk compared to the population average, and that led them to be more fit. And thus, the number of high-quality smug mates increased. Now, obviously, they reproduced, and this cycle caused the number of smug individuals to raise drastically. Now, like any good theoretician, I'm now going to prevent, or present various predictions to demonstrate the vast explanatory power of the smug hypothesis. So, the first prediction. Parents will be smug. So it's not sufficient for people to be smug. This hypothesis predicts that, in particular, parents will be smug. So let's look at some data. The first data I, I took from babycenter.com. So they asked, do you believe your child is academically gifted? Now, for the 63,000 people who participated, 72% said yes. Now, this is at odds with estimates that 5% of children are academically gifted. <laughs> but this could be sampling bias. Perhaps these parents do have academically gifted children, or perhaps this is where all the smug parents hang out. <laughs> but a 2010 study by the US government found that 97% of parents believe their children are well-behaved. If you... <laughs> If you've ever been in a grocery store or on an airplane, you know this can't be true. <laughs> and the authors did not believe this to be true either. They suggested that parents weren't lying, but they honestly believed their children were well-behaved. They had an unjustified belief in their achievement as parents, AKA, they were smug. <laughs> so, so clearly parents are smug, but perhaps there's a more interesting question. 
What behaviors have we evolved to increase our smugness? How do we maintain this unjustified belief about ourselves and others? Now, in a community, we communicate and exchange information, and by doing this, we come to a mutual understanding of our shared reality and our shared existence. Now, if in order to be smug, you need to maintain your own unjustified feelings, so what would you do? Well, I would suggest that you would just not listen. <laughs> so prediction two is that people will actively avoid information that challenges their unjustified beliefs. So what I'd like to show you is modern evidence of this uh, adaptation. So what I did is I went to Alexa.com, which ranks websites by overall internet traffic. So if you look at the, the top websites on this list, what we find is that there, there's a common motif. They all allow the users to curate the content so they can only see what they'd like to see, either automatically or manually. So let's look at number three, YouTube. On YouTube, you can post lengthy videos detailing your opinions and then disable the comments. <laughs> it's not until number six we find Wikipedia, the world's largest source of human knowledge. So clearly, people prefer sites where they can curate their exposure to information. Now, there are millions of more predictions this theory makes and terabytes of more data to support it, but for the sake of time, I'd like to skip to the conclusions. <laughs> so conclusion one, humans have evolved to be smug because when you're smug, your kids are better. <laughs> conclusion two, parents are especially smug. And I, I think that this conclusion actually solves a lot of arguments that teenagers have. <laughs> and then finally, the, I think the most important finding of this study is that the main function of the internet is to increase human smugness. <laughs> So while I, I personally believe I've done an incredible job explaining this theory to you, uh, if any doubt remains, I'm sure that I can clear it up during the questions. Thank you.